Welcome to the Answers Yes podcast, where we interview some of the most interesting people that have said yes to opportunities in their life. We hope that through these stories, you can learn to create your own destiny by saying yes along the way. Join us as we explore the new series covering topics such as passion, integrity, and hard work. I'm your host, Jim Riley, and I hope you enjoy these interviews as much as I do. I believe that everyone has an important message worth hearing. This week, I sit down with Mark Nerdine from Bull Outdoor Products, and uh, you got to know that means Bull Grills, Outdoor Grills. So if you are a fan of barbecuing and outdoor kitchens, this is the show for you. I just, I have a lot of respect uh, for Mark after talking to him today about how he started his business and his philosophy throughout, and really what it comes down to is putting your head down, working hard, putting out the best product available, and constantly innovating to keep up with the times and the demands of his consumers. So uh, always appreciate products like his and the many others that are putting out incredible products for us to enjoy at our homes, as well as Mark also has a book out called The Pocket Mentor. And as I mentioned in the show, I did order mine from Amazon. I look forward to reading it. You know, he talks about not having his own mentor because of the people that he was surrounded with. And it doesn't mean that those were bad people. You know, he talks about his, his uh, friends and family that were around him at the time, but none of them were entrepreneurial. And uh, I also grew up in that situation where everybody just had normal nine to five jobs. So maybe this book, The Pocket Mentors for You. And uh, I really hope you enjoy the show because I just was great to listen to Mark's story. It just seemed very grassroots to me, super savvy when he was young, when he started the business and all these years later, still going strong. And um, again, that's uh, Bull Outdoor Products and it's bullbarbecue.com. So listen in as we uh, interview Mark today. Welcome to the show today, The Answer is Yes podcast. My name is Jim Riley, your host, and I've got somebody on the phone from East Coast today, actually, and I'll let you tell a story, but I've got Mark Nerdine on the phone. Mark, how are you doing today? Doing great. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, you know, um, I was introduced to you from a friend. His, his name is John Solomon, who knows uh, owns Liquorama out here in the West Coast, and I know that you were a West Coast guy. And John is just such a great individual with his business over there, and uh, we're very like minded. And I knew that uh, when he referred you over, that I was going to get a good story. And upon a little bit more research, the story got better. So um, I'm very happy to have you on the line today. Um, you know, oftentimes I ask people that are on the show to uh, give us some of their early background and, you know, how they got started in business or college, and um, and then we can dig into what you're doing now. But would you mind sharing a little bit of your background with us? Sure. Um, you know, I I uh, grew up in Southern California. Um, I did not go to college. I went to a trade school. I went, obviously went through, you know, the normal uh, 12 grades and had a great time. And um, I went to a trade school. I, I worked with my hands a lot when I was a kid and did a lot of construction and working on cars. And so, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm kind of a hands-on type of person. Um, and I went to a trade school in Arizona, finished it up. It was an architectural drafting school and did some of that. And then I went to work for a, a, a spa manufacturer, hot tubs. Okay. Um, and that's kind of, and I, and I worked for a company that did both manufacturing and retail. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I learned a lot about both. Um, as my, as the owner used to tell me, you know, uh, I've got competitors who can build spas, but they don't know how to sell them. Yeah. And I got competitors that know how to sell them, but they don't know how to build them. Um, so I learned a lot working for that company. Um, as a young kid, I, w- I mean, I was 20, you know, 19, 20, 20. I worked there in high school. And um, so I worked there as a, as a young kid and, and really learned a lot about, manufacturing and retail, um, which helped me a lot in, in, you know, starting my company and, and being able to build stuff and sell it. When you mentioned spas, you know, when I was a kid, it was in the eighties. I remember going to the LA County fairgrounds and just seeing these massive displays of spas with salespeople pushing, you know, uh, 20 seat spas or, you know, something for your backyard that just would, you know, like the perfect deal and everything. Is that, is that the type of company you worked for? Oh yeah. And, and we, you know, we, we did those fairs and, um, I used to set those booths up and, you know, um, I went all over the country doing that and, uh, it was a great experience. And, and part of that experience was learning 
the backyard and you know we we obviously uh being in the hot tub business you are it's all outdoors yeah um, and so we learned i learned a lot about um backyards what they look like how people use them um and and this was in the late mid to late 80s um going into the early 90s um and as today looking back the backyard was uh, very antiquated compared to what it is today uh so we were in the beginning um of the backyard evolution of what people are doing today in their backyards is is amazing compared to what you know they did back then yeah sure it, backyard might as well be the inside of your house nowadays with some of the things that are happening yeah so it was a big it was a it, and i i tell my my old boss now you know how much i learned um working there was it was a great experience and of course at the time i had no idea that i was learning what i was learning and, and how i would use that later in life so uh once you moved past the spa industry, did you jump right into your own business or did you land a couple more places? So, no. Yeah. So we, um, I had a short stint working for a, um, uh, for a construction company. Um, and then, but my, my ex partner and, um, my friend, at the, um, we, we, he still worked there and we formed, um, bull, um, our company, my company today, um, you know, shortly uh, after that, um, so he was still there. I wasn't, but we, uh, together we started bull and, um, you know, we went from there and, and started off really slow and, uh, took our time and, um, went through the whole development process and really had to do a lot of things. Um, what I would say, you know, the hard way, uh, with, you know, minimal, um, funding and, and, you know, living, uh, being young and single was probably a really big help back then because, you know, with no responsibilities, you have, um, you don't require much to, to survive. So it was, it was, it was, a, it was easy to spend a lot of time and effort, um, working on a, on something that we were creating from, from scratch. Yeah, tell tell me about the evolution of that business idea between you and your friend. Um, you, you know, you're, you're working in the spa business, you're working a little construction. All of a sudden, you decide, hey, why don't we start a company called Bull and make an outdoor grill? I mean, how does that evolve? <laughs> <laughs> well, we wanted to start our own company, um, and you know, I'm not sure why, but we did we wanted to own our own company. And, and so we were originally, you know, thinking about the spa industry, um, starting a spa company. And then we decided that we didn't really want to do that. We didn't really want to compete with our boss who had, we had worked for and, and uh, for, you know, few, quite a few years and we didn't really want to do that. So we came up with this concept of a grill in an Island. So okay. it wasn't, wasn't, we want to, we want to make barbecues. We want to make a barbecue that's in an Island. Okay. What we called an outdoor kitchen. Mm-hmm. So that was the, that was the concept. And it, it was also comes from the backyard and outdoor living industry, but it was different than a spa. It had nothing to do with the spa industry and it was completely different. And so we felt a lot better about doing that than, than getting in the spa business and um creating a uh a company that would compete with our our uh boss so that's kind of how that idea came where that idea came from i think it came from some home show in florida um you know and then it just evolved uh but at the time we had to make our own grill because they weren't as, as accessible um, than as they are today. So we, so we got in the grill business, um, by default, we just had to do it. We didn't have a choice. So, you know, that's how that hall, that's where we started with that. Now, I don't, I don't mean to dig into the, uh, the smallest minutia of that, but what does that mean? You had to make your own grill. Did you go down to the home Depot and get yourself some metal and some, I mean, how, how do you make your own grill? 
Well, we got cardboard and built a um, we built a model of a grill out of cardboard. Uh-huh. Sheet, you know, it's the, sim- the, the cardboard simulated sheet metal. Sure. We, and we kind of we built the thing out of cardboard. Um, you know, basically with a with a with a knife and tape and um, and then we um, had to build a control panel in the front um, with grates and uh the valves um and so we did it very we went out and bought used um equipment sheet metal equipment and and welders and um and uh my my partner's father was a big help and and um kind of helping us with the gas part of it and um you know we we um like a you know, a couple of guys in the backyard with a welder and some sheet metal equipment. And we, um, we formed the stuff up. We bought a, a spot welder and we welded up the, the, uh, the, the seams. And, um, I think we went and bought some grates, uh, that were already built and the hood, we, the hood part of it, we struggled with pretty, you know, that's a little bit more intricate. Yeah. We bought burners, you know, but we, you know, we, um, basically, uh, through trial and error, um, came up with a, a grill that worked. Um, and it was, um, like I said, we had the time, um, and, uh, patience because it, the patience is, you know, you can't, you get, you get, it gets frustrating, you know, working on projects like that. Um, but you just, we just kept at it and at it and at it and figured it out and, you know, eventually got it to where, uh, you know, at some point we got where we had to start sourcing out production on things because we couldn't do it. Uh, we couldn't keep up with the equipment that we had, but, and, and then we, um, found a guy in, uh, Corona that did porcelainizing. And so we would take the things down there and they would personalize it. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we took half inch pipe and, t- and drilled it and tapped it and put the valves in it. I mean, yeah, it was very, uh, very basic, very, very basic. What I love about hearing that is you guys had so much sophistication for starting a business. First of all, you knew you didn't want to compete with your boss. Um, you know, you certainly had some loyalty there. You knew enough about backyards that there was a need, so you decide that you're going to um, create this grill concept. You knew that you didn't want to work for somebody else. You wanted to start your own business, and you knew enough to have the grit and determination to figure this out on your own, find the parts, and put this thing together. And um, I, it's really a nice reminder of how things are created and started because I think in today's day and age, we just expect everything to be right there at our fingertips, you know, pop up on Amazon and have it shipped to us. And all voila, we're going to have a business. And um, I love the grit and determination that you had to put something together and figured out how to do that. So th- thanks for the reminder of what life used to be like. <laughs> well, I think, you know, first of all, in any, in any new, new uh, adventure like that, um, you're, you're trying to solve a problem or trying to, you know, create some kind of a niche, um, and, and something special. Um, and if you can buy it on the internet, it's not really special. Um, so it takes a lot of creativity and, and, and a lot of, um, determination to have a vision and then go through the process of, of making the vision, um, a reality. Uh, and that's not always easy. When you guys started this business, what was your long-term vision? Did you think it would be a success? Did you think you just make a few bucks and work for yourself so you can not have to work for somebody else? Or what were your thoughts early on on this? No clue on that. Uh, you, you know, um, I think, well, it wasn't the first company I started. This was the first, I had a smaller business that I had started with a, with another friend. Um, uh, it was a graphic design business, mm-hmm. um, and it was it, it it wasn't it worked out for him. It wasn't for me.